In this video, we are going to be taking a look at using Sphere Connect, which is a brand new remote control application by Ginger Audio designed to control ground control Sphere on both Android and iOS devices. Okay, so let's dive in. So first of all, in this video, I am going to be taking a look at using Sphere Connect with iPads and an iPhone. In order for this to work, after you've downloaded it, the very first thing to do is you need to make sure that you are running a version that supports Sphere Connect. So you need to be running anything from version 1.6.2 and above in order to work with Sphere Connect. After that, all we need to do is head to the controllers menu, and then we're going to make sure that we click this connect option. Now, the minute we click the connect option, you'll notice that we automatically have a GUI that updates to reflect what we're actually seeing in ground control Sphere, which is what we're seeing right over here. So we have a couple different tabs over here. Let's take a look at everything really quickly. We have the inputs, we have all the outputs, we have a section for our Q and our aux, and then we have metering and we have a control room section. Let's go through these one by one. Well, the inputs is pretty self-explanatory. We can adjust the different inputs from one through eight. So inputs A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. As we adjust these, we can toggle through these. Now, if we go to the outputs section, take a look at the first bank over here. We have our one, two, three, four. And if we go to our main two, we have our additional three pairs, our Alt-4, Alt-5, and Alt-6. Last but not least, we have our Q and our auxes. So this is where we have the ability to activate and deactivate the Q, and we can also adjust the level. In addition to that, we can activate aux A, aux B, aux C, or aux D. Now with any of these inputs and outputs, if I was to hover my mouse cursor on ground control sphere, take a look at what happens when I make sure that I have aux D selected and I make an adjustment to the level in the iPad app. You can see the corresponding changes being made. In addition, it's the same thing if I was to go to the inputs and do the same thing over here. If I have sphere 16 selected and I make an adjustment to the input, this is being changed. And if we were to click this cog wheel, we would see exactly where that volume change is happening here as well. So let's close this down for a moment. Now I wanna take a moment to talk about the queue. Any input that you have selected, anything from inputs A, B, C, D, all the way up to H, we have the ability to activate or deactivate the queue on a case-by-case -case basis. And we can also adjust the level. So if we take a look at the binaural 2.0, I'm going to click the cog wheel just temporarily. Notice that by default, I have this activated as a queue. And the reason for that is because I always want this going out to a set of headphones, and I don't want my dim or my mute to affect this. So in that case, I make sure that my queue is always set to on, and then I have the ability to adjust the exact send level. So this is usually always set to on, and then my level is set to zero. If I go to input C or input D, input E, F, or G, or H, I don't have the Q on for those ones. I do actually for H. So we can activate and deactivate the Q for any one of these. And also we can change the level. So that's a really quick way to be able to adjust that. Now, if we head over to the Q slash aux, this is where we have the ability to turn the Q on and off globally. And in addition to that, this will adjust our level. So I'm going to hop into Studio One for a moment. And I'm actually outputting a binaural headphone mix out of 13 and 14, which is being picked up in binaural 2.0. So let's go to our inputs, we'll go to our binaural 2.0, the Q is activated. And now if we head over to Q over here, let's press play. Now we're hearing the Q. If I deactivate this, we're not hearing anything. So I can bring the Q in and out as needed. I can also make adjustments here. And the main benefit of using this is anytime I make an adjustment to either dim or cut, that is not affecting my cue at all. Okay, now next up, I wanna take a look at the metering options. So if we go to the metering options and we go to sphere 16, let's go ahead and push play. Let's also go back to our cue and let's temporarily kill the cue. If we go back into the metering, now notice that we have a metering section, which is following. So for example, if I wanted to change to a different preset over here, so let's, select the section over here, and let's choose Spotify. Notice that this just updated Spotify. Also, if I wanted to start doing a loudness detection, I could simply click start. If I wanted to stop this, I could stop it. If I wanted to reset, I could do a reset, and then I could restart this again. 
So I'm doing a loudness detection as I want in real time. Now from there, I'm gonna head over to the control room section. This section is particularly useful in that it allows you a way to quickly and easily be able to solo or mute different pairs of channels or different sets of speakers. So for example, we have what we're used to. We can solo the fronts, we can solo the surrounds, we can solo the rears. This is especially useful in surround and immersive setups. But in addition to that, we can do things like, for example, we could enter the solo mode. And now any speaker that we select, let's say I quickly wanted to listen to a quad setup, I could select the left and right and the rear left surround and the rear right surround. And now I'm listening to a quad section. And then I could clear solo to come out of that mode and click solo again to exit out. Now, if I wanted to do the same thing, but I wanted to do mutes, let's say I wanted to do the opposite. I wanted to mute the quad and I wanted to listen to just the left and right surround, the center and the LFE. Maybe I wanted to mute the LFE as well. We have a way that we can do that really quickly. Now, in addition, we could then clear all mutes and we could escape this mute mode. Now, for a moment, let's talk about the dim and mute. So I'm going to actually change over to a spatial audio mix. So I'm going to go over to Sphere 16. And in terms of my outputs, I'm going to make sure that I'm listening to A. And now I can adjust the level that we're listening to. And this is actually going through iRender Spatial, and this is being sent to Aux A. So this gives me a really quick and easy way to be able to do this. Now this would be going out my speakers. So if I wanted to use, for example, the dim, this is going to cut 20 dB. And if I wanted to cut, that's something that I could do really, really quickly. In addition to that, I could also snap over to these different presets that we have over here, or I could mono, I could listen to the sides, I could flip, I could flip the phase on the left or right. And then of course, I could make an adjustment just by using the volume knob right over here. That is using the iPad app. And I think for the most part, this app is really, really useful when you have an iPad app. I'm going to temporarily though, I'm going to temporarily move over to using my phone because this is a completely different setup, but we can do something very, very similar. All right, so now in this case, we are looking at my phone. Now this is a similar layout in that we have our inputs, we have our outputs, we have our Q and our aux section. In this way, it functions very similar. Then we have our meter and we have our control room. These are also functioning in a very similar way. But we also have this other section over here where we can push the master button. Now when we push the master, this gives us a bigger group of volume controls that are available. So I can make adjustments the same way that I could before. Anything that we want to do, that's something that we can do very, very quick. And of course, we could dim or we could cut or anything like that. So it's very, very similar in terms of having the functionality that we have. We also have the ability to enable the talk back and disable the talk back the same way that we have with the iPad app. But it just gives you a slightly different feature set. And the really cool thing actually is that you can have both an iPad and an iPhone connected at the same time. Now, the other great thing about Sphere Connect is that this can be used in combination with all of the supported control surfaces. So if we head over to our controllers, we have our Elgato, we have our Yukon support, we have our basic MIDI controllers. You could have potentially an iPhone, an iPad, or a tablet, everything connected, and each one of them could be used for something very specific, giving you hands-on control for what you need. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.